Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Recently, I learned that there was an ATI Mach 64 video card for sale. And how did I learn it? Well, my friend Rob Ivey tagged me in a post where they were selling them, so I bought it. And although the card was advertised as a wind turbo, it's actually a Graphics Pro Turbo, and it's a very nice card with two megabytes of memory. Here you can see a list of different ATI Mach 64 cards, and I've highlighted the Graphics Pro Turbo in the table here. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. And as you will see here shortly, the seller spared no expense in using lots of bubble wrap. I'll go ahead and get this unraveled here, and eventually there is a card in there somewhere. And here we can see it in this nice anti-static bag. We'll go ahead and flip this over and take the tape off so that we can get the card out of the bag and have a closer look at it. So very well packaged, very impressed by that. And before long, there it is. We can see the card in all of its glory. It's a nice looking card. And here you can see the back of the card. Very nice. And I love the Visa Local Bus expansion you see on the right there. One thing you will notice is this card has a sticker that says non-upgradable. You can't easily add more memory to it. I'll go ahead and do a poor man's pan and drag this card along the desk. I'm sure it's great for ESD minded folks who are screaming, but oh well. And here we will see we have eight chips, which makes up the two megabytes of video card memory. Here we can see the heart of it all the Mach 64 graphics GPU. And over here, it looks like we also have a support chip here, a Spectra DAC. And here we have a BIOS chip. It is socketed, so I guess that means it could be upgraded. Here you will see the FCC ID of the card, and that's what I used to really figure out what this card was, though there is a part number above as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get this card installed. The first thing we'll do here is remove the cover from the case. With three screws, it's out because, well, there's one strip screw hole on this case. Now we'll go ahead and pull the existing card out and have a look at it. It happens to be, as you will see, an Orchid Kelvin 64 VLB card, which is actually a very nice card as well. And now we can get the Mach 64 card installed. I don't know about you, but for me, whenever I try to put a card into a Visa Local Bus slot, I always end up fumbling and bumbling around, but eventually we will get this card seated and we can put a screw in here to retain it so it will be all set, and with that we will be good to go. Let's go ahead and do our first power on here, and as I power up the machine I don't see any smoke, so I think this is a very good sign. The card does have a nice set of utilities. What you're seeing here first is a DOS test utility where different color palettes are chosen. And quite frankly, they chose some fairly interesting ones if you do ask me. Next, we're gonna run the Microsoft Windows installer for Windows 3.1. This will copy files to the Windows directories and modify the INI files associated with Windows. So here we can launch the ATI desktop and have a look at Flex Desk Plus. Say that three times fast. I'm going to go into the advanced settings here and we can see some different settings here for small fonts, large fonts, etc. And I went ahead and changed the resolution to 800 by 600 to show you what that looks like. And now we're gonna bump it up to 1024 by 768. And we can see a nice desktop once we do that, but it will require a Windows restart. And here we can see it. So here we are back in Flex Desk Plus. We can see we have 65K colors with 1024 by 768. I also went back and changed the display to small fonts because I prefer that much over large fonts. So that's all good to go there. Let's have a look at the DPMS program. And what you can do here is set a timeout for standby or suspend or off time for your display. We can also look at Deskscape, which I think allows you to pan and zoom according to different settings you specify. There's also this wind switch program, which allows you to assign hotkeys to resolutions. That's a pretty cool concept. But the most fun tool is this color correction tool, because we can drag this line here and get a nice blue tinted screen or a pink tinted screen. I don't think I'd want to do that in reality, but that was a lot of fun. And next we'll go into screen adjustment. And I have this set at 70 Hertz. 
Though I will say this particular card is very, very picky about refresh rates, and I don't know why. But when I set standard refresh rates that other cards allow, my monitor goes out of sync. So there's something very strange about this card, but I'll just leave it at that. We'll go ahead and close the ATI desktop, and then from there, that pretty much concludes our tour of Windows. Next, we'll look at games. And I will comment that here in Wolfenstein 3D, those vertical lines that you see, that's not a figment of your imagination. That's real and not ideal. Next, we'll launch Commander Keen, but we can see we have some side-scrolling weirdness, and that is a known issue for this card. There's actually a database that keeps track of different chipsets and how compatible they are with DOS games, and here you can see the line for the Mach 64 GX-based systems. Fortunately, there is someone who came up with a fix for this that we can apply and patch Commander Keen and have good scrolling. And after applying it, now you can see the scrolling is much better. I'm very pleased with this outcome. This is definitely a win. Let's go ahead and launch WordPerfect 5.1. And boy, does that look great. <laughs> okay, I'm joking around a little bit. Of course, a text mode program is going to look fine. We can load the graphical portion, though, and that looks fine as well. So just for fun, I decided to run the Superscape VGA benchmark to get a frame rate calculation for this card. And we can see it actually did pretty well at 66.6 .6 frames per second. Compared to the Kelvin 64 card that I had in the system, this is actually slightly faster, but the Kelvin card is no slacker either. So kind of fun to see these statistics. So that's an overview of my ATI Mach 64 Graphics Pro Turbo in about seven minutes or less. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.